Hey, hey, this is TDA and welcome to a quick update on Dyson Sphere program. We just got an update today, so here's a quick overview of what's new. Okay, so the first new exciting thing is actually this research improved logistics system being upgraded. We now have an extra item here, which is the traffic monitor. And the traffic monitor is awesome. I'll quickly show you how it works. You put it down over a belt and it starts measuring how much stuff is actually going through it on the belt. It will show you the cargo per minute. So this is the number of items that go through this thing per minute. And it will measure this over a period that you can set. So um, it, it you can actually have it register whether or not you get enough things on your belts. So for example, right now, if I set this cycle to one second, it will start measuring every second how much items are going through it. And it will base the cargos per minute on what, what went through it in the last second. Now this is obviously a very short time, so if I put it on the longer rate, it will take, for example, half a minute to measure, and then it will take the average over that half a minute in this case. You can see the average going up because it starts registering at zero, and then it will take the average. But if I decrease the amount of time, then of course the average goes up faster. So it depends on how, how much variance you have in your production, how you want to measure it. You can set it to your own preferences. Now the target flow is how much items I want on my belt. So let's say I put it to a second, just to keep it simple. If I want to make sure that at least, let's say three items are going past my belt uh, per second, then of course right now, as you can see, this belt is not moving particularly fast. It will fail, so it shows red. So this is actually not having at least three items per second passing this traffic monitor. Well. Lighting up red is a nice visual indicator whether or not this is doing what I want it to. But of course I can set it to different things. You can set it to equal or not to equal or larger than, smaller than, etc. Generally speaking, I think most people will be using this to check whether or not, for example, your um, factory is actually being supplied with base materials and give you an alert when it's not. For example, your, your miners ran dry or anything like that. Uh, but you can use it for other stuff as well. Well, this is just visual, but what about when I'm on a different planet? Well, you can set a global alarm. And for example, I can set the global alarm to trigger when it fails. As you can see, you, I ha now actually have a pop-up on my screen that tells you, hey, this traffic monitor number one is actually failing. And this is a very generic item, but let's say I want to set it to show me that it's actually the call that's failing. I can set the icon over here. And now wherever I am in the universe, it will show up and say, hey, TDA, your call is not actually reaching the amount that you set it to. And of course, right now it's giving the warning. Um, but of course, normally, if my production is up and running, I would not get this warning. And then at some point my uh, call runs out and you get this popping up and you know where to go back to. Um, this is just a visual indicator once again, but you can even set it to, for example, give you an alarm. The alarm gets annoying very quick, so you can put the volume up and down depending on what you prefer. So maybe putting it a little bit down. You can actually see it's hovering around red and green now, so this is interesting. You can change the pitch if you don't like the sound. Set it lower for example. Set it higher. And if you want to get really creative, you can even set it to play some music for you. So let's say... For example, the trumpet. Then of course now it just started to pass. But for example, if you set it to... As you can, could tell, this was just one sound, but you can also set it to loop. For example, with a two seconds length. And then every two seconds, it will remind you, hey, something is triggering that you need to be aware of. Now you can get really creative and make a whole symphony out of these sounds, but this give, gives you a feel for what this actually does. But there's a few very nice quality of life upgrades as well. So for example, remember this delete when you push F2 and then you can mass delete stuff. How many times did you have it set to this? Then you do something else, then you go back and you're like, oh, let me just change this one belt. And then suddenly you deleted half your base because it was still set to this. Well, as you can see, 
if I now start to delete again, it's automatically set to single delete. So no more mass deleting something in the middle of your base. But that's not everything. Oh my god, blueprints. They actually increase the limits on every single level of the blueprint. So as you can see, if you just get the mass construction level 1, you can already make blueprints of 150 facilities. Level 2, 300. Level 3, 900. Level 4, 3600. And then of course you get the infinite one after that. But this means that you can really already start making quite significantly... Um, nice blueprints very early on in the game and for me as a content creator which tends to share all his blueprints it is very very nice to have this because that basically allows you to not split up your earlier builds in like six different blueprints but maybe limit it to two or three if it's a bigger one or maybe just keep it all in one blueprint if it's a smaller build so yeah awesome Now another thing, remember this awesome line when you move from one planet to another? That used to stick around after you actually reached your planet. Well, let's check what happens now. If you now reach your planet, then instantly after you land, the line is gone. As you can see, no more line. Is this a huge upgrade? No. Is this something that was annoying me? Like every single time I flew through a planet? Yes. And I'm probably not the only one, so I it's worth mentioning. Now there is one last thing I want to mention. Now this last change is quite a subtle one, but it's actually important if you make larger builds. So what they changed is that before these matrix labs used to suck up 20 of each resource that was needed to make one item. So that has been reduced to 4. As you can see, there's only 4 processors going in in order to make this, in this case, purple science. Why is that a better thing? Because normally you would say, well, if you can stock, stock up more resources, good for you. That is good because it takes forever for buildings like this to actually start up. Because there's 20 of each going in this one, 20 of each going in that one. So you actually delay your production in larger builds because the initial few buildings start sucking up all those resources. Now, the matrix labs have been reduced from 20 to 4. Everything else has been reduced from 5 times as much to 3 times as much. It's a subtle change, but again, for larger builds, it just speeds up the moment where you actually reach your full production. Okay, that was it for this update. I just want to give a big shout out to the developers for being awesome and giving us all these regular updates and improving our game. I hope you found this summary useful. If you did, please give me a like and a comment. That would really help out the visibility of this on the channel. And just let me know that you liked it. All right, see you in the next one. And don't forget, if you like my content, then I will be starting a new Let's Play on Monday. So don't forget to subscribe if you find that interesting. See you in the next one.